Mr. Speaker, last week, Liberals raised concerns about the NDP government's very low targets for demand-side management of electricity growth in Manitoba. And the Premier appeared to not even know that demand-side management in Manitoba is insufficient compared to other jurisdictions. He doesn't know. Last week, Liberals also raised the issue of compact line technology, which could be used at least for some sections of Bipole 3. Absolutely. And the Premier appeared to have never even heard of compact line technology, let alone considered it. No, he doesn't know. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask the Premier, why is his NDP government so poorly informed of such critical issues related to Bipole 3. Mr. Speaker, uh, one shouldn't turn this assumption into a fact, which is what he's done here, Mr. Speaker. We have considered ways to increase the reliability of Manitoba Hydro. Let's recall that 70 percent of the energy comes down through two transmission lines in the interlake. In 1996, those transmission lines were put out of service due to very serious weather events. There was an opportunity to do something about it, which was completely ignored by the members opposite. They were too busy privatizing the telephone system as opposed to focusing on hydro. We're now building additional transmission to provide increased reliability to all Manitoba citizens, to all Manitoba businesses, and a $62 billion economy for those transmission lines to go down even for one week would more than pay for the cost of building the new transmission, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, improve demand side management to at least match the average of American jurisdictions is surely essential to efficient operation of energy production and utilization in our province. They are Americanized. Why are Massachusetts, Arizona, Rhode Island, New York, Vermont, Illinois, Minnesota, and so many more states Colorado. doing so much better than Manitoba when it comes to demand side management of electricity use? When will the Premier table a plan for much better demand-side management in Manitoba? Mr. Speaker, just about all of those jurisdictions pay at least double what we pay in Manitoba for hydroelectricity. But we do believe in demand-side management. When we came into office, there was no, there was no residential demand-side management for Manitobans. We went from number 10 on energy efficiency demand management programs to number one in the country. We think we can do even better. We've introduced innovative legislation called Pay As You Save, PAYS, which lets somebody put new technology in their home, insulation, high-efficiency furnace, geothermal, other forms of clean technology, and the first month after they install that technology, their bill is lower than it was before. They save money and get the environmental benefit and get the savings. That is a way to go in the future. We think Manitoba Hydro can take it to an even higher level. Stay tuned for future announcements. Mr. Speaker, sadly, Manitoba is a laggard in demand-side management, laggard. as the graph yes. which I table shows. Nova laggard. Scotia, Washington, Connecticut, Mississippi, Iowa, British Columbia, Ohio, Arkansas, California, Michigan, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin are all doing better than Manitoba. I ask the Premier again, when will his government come forward with an up-to-date effort and a plan for better demand-side management in our province? Note. Not only do most of the jurisdictions he references have double the rates, they're also usually highly dependent on coal and carbon fuels for what they do. Manitoba Hydro, 98 plus percent clean hydroelectric power, lowest rates in North America, Mr. Speaker. That's our advantage in Manitoba. And we know that if we conserve more energy, and I believe we can, it'll help keep Manitoba's cost of living low. We do have the lowest rates in North America for hydroelectricity, for auto insurance, and home heating. And by law, we're going to keep it that way, Mr. Speaker.